Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Taylor Ann and right now I am here with Mr. Ed Harden. He is the North Carolina Sports Writer of the Year. Congratulations. Thanks Taylor Ann, I appreciate that. Yes, and thank you so much for joining us today and for joining us in person. My first in-person interview for this, so that's very exciting. Well, I'm honored. <laughs> so this is your fifth NSMA award, which is awesome. That is a good number. <laughs> it's a good one to end on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are a retired sports columnist for the Greensboro News and Record, but you're freelancing for a lot of um, different publications on the side right now. I am a former columnist and I'm dabbling in freelance and I'm teaching harmonica to COPD patients every Monday. So, that's so I'm that's a so professional funny. harmonica instructor now. So. Well, that's a fun thing to add to your LinkedIn for sure. <laughs> um, but my first question to you is, how does it feel to be nominated by your peers a fifth time? It's, uh, it's the greatest honor. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years, and I've won you know, countless awards, things, contests and such. This is different. Mm -hmm. This is literally chosen by your peers, and it's, I believe it's the highest honor. I'm, I'm just humbled by it. Awesome, awesome. Well. Um, would you tell me a little bit how you got into this profession, what maybe your school for it looked like, that job experience that you had? Well, my first job ever was Paperboy, so <laughs> I've always been in newspapers in a sense. Um, I went to college, I went to Western Carolina because I wanted to catch trout, you know, I didn't <laughs> have a plan. But I figured out I could work at the school newspaper. And when I finally had enough trout fishing, I transferred to UNCG where I eventually became the, the editor of the school newspaper, the Carolinian. And that just, that was the springboard. I mean, I went straight from Greensboro to right across the street here at the Winston-Salem Journal, walked into the building, told them, I'm going to be a sports writer. And it just happened. They said, you need to transfer to Carolina. And I, and I laughed and they laughed. And that Friday I was taking phone calls, football games over the telephone. So I became a sports writer then and there. Well, that's so awesome. What did you major in? in English. English, yeah. awesome. How do you think that translated over? Perfectly. Um, I didn't go to J school, obviously. Mm -hmm. I went, yes. uh, I thought I was going to teach maybe. Um, thought I might go to law school. I did not know what in the world I was going to do, but I loved to read, I loved to write, and I couldn't get this conversation I had with my dad out of my head. I was probably 15. And I'm watching like the third ACC basketball game of the day. It's a Saturday afternoon. And he walks in. He's like, son, what do you think you're going to do with your life? You think they're going to pay you to sit around and watch sports for the rest of your life? <laughs> and it was an, an epiphany. I was like, I never forgot that. So, yeah, it, that always came back to me. That I really, deep down, was meant to be a sports writer. It's awesome. Um, so, obviously, you're very passionate about your position. But I was wondering if you had a favorite part of it. The variety, I think. Um, in the old days, it was the access. You know, you, you loved the travel. You loved the hotel, the road. Being on the road was great. But as, as I got older, I found that the things I really liked were, were deadlines. Mm -hmm. I loved deadline pressure. That, that type of writing is unlike any other mm -hmm. type of writing. I, it's hard to explain to people, but I just loved it. And I, looking back on it, that's really all I miss. That and the other sports writers. I miss the press box. You know, I miss being a sports writer. So in that, um, I'm sure you have some great stories from your time. Do you want to share <laughs> any of those with us? So many. <laughs> so many. I mean, I've been in it so long that I covered Dean Smith, you mm. know? And a story that I always tell about, about Dean. I, I smoked in those days. I was mm -hmm. a smoker. And there were only a handful of us, but Dean was one too. And so before every game, we had to find this little little part of whatever arena we were in to smoke, because mm -hmm. you couldn't smoke everywhere. And Dean invariably asked me for a book of matches. You know, Ed, do you have that book of matches? You know, he would take the matches, light his cigarette, and steal my matches <laughs> every time. I never got my matches back from Dean Smith, so somewhere in his closet there's a sport coat full of my matches. So. <laughs> That's so interesting. I don't think many people get to see that side of Probably Dean Smith. Not. So it's a really um, interesting perspective on him for sure. Um, I was also wondering, a lot of the other sportscasters and sports writers I've talked to have talked about 
uh, luck being a really mm-hmm. important part of their story. I was wondering how you feel that played into your personal career path. Luck and timing. Um, I learned from an early age, well, again, my dad, he said, people are going to ask you to, to do things, and you're going to have to tell them sometimes, I don't know. And I just rejected that. I just said, no. If somebody asks me if I can do something, I'm going to say yes, and then I'm just going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what I always did. Right across the street here at the Journal, they, they said, just don't let the phone ring twice. <laughs> And that's all I did. And it just one thing led to another. I never let them get rid of me. I always said, yes, I can do the next thing. And 40 years later, here we sit. So, <laughs> um, so do you have any tips or tricks, maybe how to improve your writing abilities for somebody <sighs> who's getting started or even just looking to improve? It's so new now. The writing is going to be completely different from what I did. You're going to need to know a different set of tools. Obviously video, you're going to need to podcast, you're going to need to blog. Things that I never really did. Social media is such such a big part of it now. and So you're writing quicker, you're not writing deadline as such. Mm-hmm. So you just have to learn that niche and it's, it's something that you just pick up. You can't, people can give you tips, yeah do this, don't do that, but the main thing you have to jump in and just do it. So how did you personally keep up with, I realize it might be different for different people, but was there a certain thing that you tried to do to keep up with the changing trends? I mean, even in my day, technology was always changing. We didn't have handheld tape recorders. Mm -hmm. We didn't have tape recorders at all. We had typewriters. I walked into a press box with an IBM Selectric typewriter. (laughs) These big (laughs) And... All of a sudden, one day, there was this thing called the TRS-80, the, this Trash-80 laptop that changed sports writing and all of journalism forever. So that started the upgrades in laptops through the years. And to this day, I have a, a laptop that I used when I was a sports writer at the end. And it's an amazing tool. It's probably more advanced than what the first men on the moon had. You know, it's, we've come that far. So... Yeah, technology is always going to change, and it's it's over my head now. If I started right now, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I, I like my glasses; <laughs> they're they're fun to me. I'm learning all the stuff that you were just uh, speaking on. Um, so I was wondering, in your time at college, was there maybe an important lesson or something that you learned while you were on the, um, working on the paper that kind of that aha moment, or just that made you realize you want to go into this industry? Yeah, it was really all about time management. I remember, I mean, my senior year at UNCG, I was editor of the school newspaper. I was working across the street here at the Journal on Tuesdays. Well, that, by the end, I was working every weeknight mm-hmm. and, and Saturdays for that matter. So I had to study. I had to keep up my grades. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had a newborn child. Oh my yeah, I was getting ready to get married. I had all these balls in the air and there was no alternative to say I can't, because I had to. Mm-hmm. I had to do it. It's like I tell people, deadline writing is all about this. You have no choice. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as writer's block. You have to do it, because the paper's coming out with you or without you. Mm-hmm. So you just have to learn how to navigate pressure. You have to understand what it feels like to be choking on deadline. Mm-hmm. And you have to use that. You have to use that to your advantage, which you can. You turned it into adrenaline, so that would be my, my greatest tip to a young writer. Yeah. Well, I know you said time management, but how did you do that? <laughs> how did you juggle essentially a part-time job with finishing up your schooling and being I a mean, father? I had to get rid of something, so it, yeah. I think it was sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think sleep is what, what lost out in that. But again, you just did it. You know, yeah. There was no choice. There was no alternative. I, I can't imagine. Sometimes I feel like I'm floundering with my, and I do not, nearly do not have as much of that on my plate. So more power to you for being able to juggle all of that. That's very, very impressive. I can see why you're so successful. Um, but lastly, I wanted to ask you if you had any uh, kind of comprehensive advice for somebody looking into go looking to go into your line of work. Well, understand the realities of it before you go in because I, it's not what I went into. It's changed completely. 
you're going to have to stay light on your feet. You're going to have to adapt mm -hmm. because it's never going to be the same job two days in a row. Mm -hmm. It's breaking news, breaking sports, whatever. That it's, that every day is different. Every hour is going to be different. So don't get set in on anything. Stay light on your feet. Be able to move and adapt and roll with the punches because they're going to come at you every day over and over and over. And you, you've got to, you have to survive it first, mm -hmm. you know? Once you realize you can survive it, that this is not going to kill you, then you're there. Mm -hmm. Then you can go relax a little bit and do your job. Awesome. Is there any last minute thing that you want to add? Any <laughs> <laughs> last pearls of wisdom before we wrap up here? Um, just chase your dream. This, this is mm -hmm. the greatest job in the world if, if you do it right and you get around the right people. So just don't ever give up. Chase your dream and do it your way. I mean, people are going to try and change you. They're going to try and change your approach to things. But you have to be you at the end. At the end of the day, it's all about you. And just be true to yourself. Awesome. Well, that's a very encouraging piece of advice. But thank you so much for taking thank the time you, to come down here in person uh, to know, talk it. to us. Um, I know I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers watching did as well. Um, but thank you for everybody for taking the time to watch and thank you again for coming in. So my pleasure. Thanks everybody.